Hi, this is Jesse Barkasi. It is September 17th, 2011. And today I'm going to uh, make a, a juice while I talk about some of the things I've been learning over the last few months and years about nutrition. Um, I got some, I have some grapes here, green and red. These red grapes were uh, a little bit soft, so I'll juice them. And the the grapes are uh, were inexpensive, so I bought a whole bunch of them to make some juice. I used to drink juice, uh, grape juice from um, the store that was pasteurized. I didn't realize from the studies that I'm doing that when you cook something, it kills a lot of the phytonutrients and phytochemicals. We have uh, some pineapples here and some watermelon and watermelon rind. I'm trying to not let it fall. And we have some kiwi, grapes, apple, uh, some plums. These also a teeny bit soft. And I found this apple and the fruit dish uh, that I missed a couple days, so not too good for eating, but good for juicing. And the watermelon rind. So grapes, watermelon, kiwi, apple, plums, pineapple, and watermelon rind. And what I'll do is I'll juice everything but the watermelon rind, and I'll put that into a glass and give that to my kids. Maybe even mix it with a little bit of water. And I will put the watermelon rind in my juice because it's very sweet for me. I want it a little bit less sweet and I might even add some water just to hydrate me more and uh, to dilute it a little bit. Um, but it's very tasty. So what uh, I've been learning is, uh, put this juicer on. What I've been learning is um, that the living foods are the most important and the most... Uh, the most helpful to uh, recuperating and making your yourself healthier and I, you know I was taught a lot of wrong things I believe some of the things were that for example grapes uh, I remember my mother having diabetes and they said well you can only eat 10 grapes in a day because your sugar level would go high and she had she got diabetes later in life well what I didn't realize is why she got diabetes why she had it because um, later on in life when she uh, her heart was damaged she lost some weight because she couldn't eat basically she got rid of her diabetes and her high blood pressure so I started looking things up I happened to see a book in the, in the uh, bookstore and what I found out from reading several several books is that the fats in the food the fats in, in meat even if you trim the fat around the steak or take the skin off the chicken the, the fats are embedded in the meats um, especially like bacon and so forth and cheese and what happens is you um, if you eat the fat like a cheeseburger or something like that the fat circulates through your blood for four hours and it's thick fat um, that does include it does include uh, olive oil because um, olive oil is a fat and the good part of olive oil is that at body temperature, at room temperature, it does not solidify. So it doesn't solidify in the veins. The bad part is it still absorbs the insulin, inhibits insulin if you take enough of it. And the fats from meats and cheeses actually embeds in the muscle tissue and the organs of the body. Um, just a quick note before I finish what I'm talking about fats. Kiwi is very strong tasting, very good but very strong, especially if it's not fully ripened, uh, using one kiwi and we'll taste it throughout the whole juice. Okay, so anyway, what I found out is the fats, they absorb insulin, number one. Number two, they embed in the muscle and organs. Okay, so you got the fat in your system for four hours. So you eat a cheeseburger or something, that's going to be circulating through your system for four hours, making you tired. It's going to absorb the insulin. Okay, the next thing is, from four to ten days, the fat is going to stay in your muscles and your tissues. And the insulin will not be able to key into your organs and tissues properly, and it will not be able to deliver the sugar from your bloodstream to your tissues. That causes the raise in blood sugar, the raise in insulin, and the damage to your body. Um, that's the most important thing I learned. So every time I think I get a craving for a cheeseburger or something, which I don't really get anymore, when I was getting it, I was thinking, geez, for, for four hours i got to be tired with this fat circulating, thickening my blood. And then for four to ten days, I'm going to have to be, 
you know, uh, not absorbing the proper amount of sugar in my muscle tissue, the amount of sugar and nutrients that I need for energy. And here's the plums. So that's kind of helped me. It made me think, geez, do I want the next four hours to be productive or do I want to be tired and sluggish? And do I want the next three to four days to be very productive and have high energy or to be sluggish? Okay, the next thing I noticed with the plants, eating the plants and the juices alive, is that I feel like sleeping earlier. I feel like going to sleep earlier. I'm eating meats or cheeses and breads and things like that, and uh, I want to stay up later, and I want to eat later also. So I don't know why that is, but I feel like sleeping earlier and getting up earlier, which is a nice feeling. So this thought about grapes, I had a negative thought. If I ate a lot of grapes, it's a lot of sugar, it's going to harm me. But if your body's cleared out of the fats, you're going to absorb the sugars and you can pretty much eat all the fruits and vegetables you want and it shouldn't do anything. I mean, you know, if you have a certain problem like diabetes or something, you got to check with your doctor and, you know, have him check your insulin and your blood levels, the apple. But that's um, pretty much the big part of what I've learned um, in the last few months and years. And I connected the dots because there was um, differing... Um, Thoughts. There was the Atkins diet where they were losing weight and they were eating all these fats. So they were losing weight, but they were having no no carbs or low carbs, which made sense to me. Then, wow, okay, I see what's happening. You're eating no carbs or low carbs. And what that does is you don't have any sugar to absorb in your bloodstream. So your body starts to tap into the natural fat stores that you have. But the Atkins diet, people complain of sluggishness. Um, it'll still clog your veins and arteries and damage the body. And you still have a high amount of uric acid from just eating all meats and dairies all day and fats. So I think that the better way is, the best way is probably raw vegan. The biggest amount of food you should eat. The second amount, in my opinion, is something like rice and grains and... Um, wheat, cracked wheat, and barley, and potatoes, and certain starches that grow, maybe plantains. Um, I think those, you know, cook, you, you could pretty much eat a lot of them, and your body will still absorb it. Um, the fats fooled me because of the Atkins diet. So for a few years, I was ignoring the fats, and I was avoiding eating too much fruits. And that was wrong, I think. Switching back to the fruits and vegetables and salads, as you can see, I, you know, I can't get enough of it. Switching back to the fruits and salads and nuts and beans, I just I don't need naps. Even if I sleep three hours in the night, I don't even need a nap. I get more sleep than that because it's easier to sleep, but I don't need to. Um, so a way for it to help you lose weight and want to move more is, in my opinion, to eliminate any fats and oils that you eat throughout the day first. Secondly, eliminate the processed foods and add a lot of raw fruits and vegetables. Now, you don't need a juicer. This juicer costs a lot of money, $390. The reality is you can just eat the fruits and vegetables, but it's a lot. You'll, you have to eat a lot to get the proper energy out of it. So, if you want to feel like moving, you have the fruits. I start in the morning now. I only eat fruits in the morning, just fruits. And then I'll make a, for lunch, I'll make a juice. And um, I still will, I'm uh, wanting the rice and potatoes a little bit cooked. But I'm starting to move away from that even. But I think that's still good for me because it's kind of putting the, the, the filling my stomach a little bit. And um, that's another thing, getting the feeling of not being full to like that feeling is another good thing because then I feel like walking around up the street or running or riding a bicycle with my kids or pitching them ball, something like that. I feel like moving more. So before I was eating, you know, really between two and seven eggs in the morning and I was having a toast with that and maybe a bacon with that and then, you know, I have a glass of milk or something like that. All of that fats, fats, fats in my system inhibiting the sugar in my bloodstream all day. No wonder why I felt like sitting down. You know, a sit-down job kind of felt good. But when I eat the fruits in the morning, 
I feel like moving. I feel like thinking. And it's a nice steady. It's not like this hyper uh, energy. It's a very steady and a calm energy. I could, I could not be drawn into arguments. Um, I don't. My emotions don't go up and down hardly at all. It's a nice steady feeling to have the fruits and vegetables in the morning. Um, so might want to give that a try. But if, you, like I said, if you have a problem or any issue, you should always consult your doctor. Um, I also looked up some people on the internet eating 20 and 30 bananas in a day eating whole 10 and 20 pound watermelons for breakfast and they were thin as rails they literally were in their 30s and 40s and their bodies looked like teenagers and there were some people that had before after picture lose, losing uh, like 40 pounds or 100 pounds and they said at first they really didn't exercise they lose, lose about a pound a day or a pound every other day just eating fruits and vegetables all day long so my opinion is that this is the best way to go. The next thing is after eating a lot of meats and dairies, I notice if, if you have to go to the bathroom when you pee in the bladder, you could feel the acid, the actual uric acid from the waste and the uric acid that's in the tissues of the animal and the milk. And also breaking down the protein to amino acids, back turning to protein in your body, you're only getting a little bit of protein and a lot of waste. So I noticed there's a like a burning or an acid feeling. I could eat a I could drink a thick juice like this. As you can see, it's really a thick brownish color. And I could, you know, put carrots in a vegetable juice and spinach and so forth. And I could drink a couple glasses of it. And when I pee, it's almost like filtered water. What is that telling me? It's telling me my body's absorbing almost all the nutrients. And uh, through my in my kidneys is just expelling the excess water. So that really tells me something, and no, none of the burning acid feeling in the, um, the bladder, which makes me think that could be partially a cause of prostate cancer. And I've heard people say that the acid from uric acid and the breakdown of uh, animal tissue, uh, when you pee, basically the uric acid coming out, you're also peeing calcium out because it's kind of dissolving the bones in your body. I don't know exactly the physiology if that's possible, but it kind of makes sense to me that acid could do something like that. And since the highest incidence of osteoporosis is in the Nordic regions, where they have a high uh, uh, intake of milk and dairy, it, it kind of makes me think backwards. And in Thailand, apparently the, um, the incidence of prostate cancer, breast cancer, and osteoporosis is one of the lowest in the world. And their diets are mostly plant-based, steamed vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables are steamed. So that's my talk for the day. It's just very interesting um, to me. Uh, so if you start to eliminate the fats in your diet, you will be able to derive more energy from fruits and vegetables. And you'll be able to eat a massive amount if you really need to. If you start to feel tired from eating fruits or vegetables or sluggish, start eating some more because you're meant to be able to eat a lot more. Um, and when you juice them, this is like a supercharge. This will force into your cells and it help expel some of the toxins. But you don't need to. You can just eat the fruits and vegetables and you'll be fine. And uh, I'm just going to give this a, a quick little taste while uh, I'm on air here just so you guys can see uh, before I put the other stuff in. Oh my God, just incredibly delicious. I could feel it going in. And, you know your taste buds actually change the less fat you eat the less milk the less dairy the less uh, bread you eat and the more fruits and vegetables you start to like these more later on I'm gonna make a celery apple cucumber celery apple cucumber and um, carrot that's a main mix that I've been making for a long time throughout the last uh, couple months and the Omega Vert is a good juicer. I think they sent me a new base because the old one, uh, the first one I got, I think was one defective and they don't get many of that. I think they sent me a whole new base. What a great company. I recommend that if you want to juice. And my brother just bought a Vitamix I found out today. He was at the Big E. And um, kudos for him because I'm hoping he could lose some weight and, and get healthy. He's 20 years older than me and pretty good shape. So hopefully he could lose some of the weight and he'll be fine. Well, my sister-in-law. So... That's my talk for today. If you can eliminate the fats over four to six days or 10 days, you'll start to feel the effects of eating fruits and vegetables. And remember, 
worrying about the protein, there is amino acids in these fruits. Okay, there's amino acids in vegetables, especially greens. That directly goes to your muscles and creates muscle. Okay, it doesn't have to be transformed. When you're eating protein in chicken and meat, that's kind of a fallacy. They're saying, wow, there's 56 grams of protein in this meat. Yeah, there's 56 grams, but you're only going to absorb 5 or 10. The rest is going to be waste product, it's going to be acid, and it's going to go out of your system, and it's just going to make you tired because you have to convert the protein to amino acid uh, back into the protein of your muscle. And then you have to eliminate the waste. It has to go filter through your bloodstream and kidneys, and the fat and everything and the acid thickens in your blood. Just no good. Animals that eat that kind of, of diet, tigers and lions and so forth, they have a very short uh, intestine, two hours, the food's out of their system, it's not rotting in their system. The, the, the animal meats immediately start to decay. They start a chemical process that helps them decay so that they can you know, disintegrate. And there's little uh, you know, chemical reactions and little uh, bacteria in there. That actually can make your own muscle decay. Okay, because you're eating the same thing. So they're eating the kill very fresh and there's you know it's disgusting, but they're eating the you know bloody and all this stuff. Sometimes they eat other each other alive in the wild, if you go look at you know some videos. But um, pretty much this is hydrating, it has the amino acids, it has the sugars, but if you're eating high fats, if you're eating bacon and eggs, and then you mix it with fruits, yes, your blood sugar, my opinion, will go up. If you're clearing your body out and you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, it's going to go direct to your muscles, your eyes, your brain, and you're going to feel great. You're going to feel like moving. So I hope that helps some people thinking about adding fruits and vegetables to your diet. Yes, it, it can be bad for you if you have a high fat content in your bloodstream and in your muscles. To eliminate that high fat content and then have the fruits and vegetables, in my opinion, is the key. So maybe in the, the hundreds and thousands of years ago, People had fruits and they would eat it when it was in abundance in the summertime or certain seasons. And then they would be out of fruits so they'd go hunting and then maybe they would eat meats. Maybe that's why they stayed you know, healthy and kind of thin and they gained a, you know, probably had a little bit of fat in their system. But I think that they were homogenous in their eating. I don't think they ate meals like us. A salad, a meat, a potato, and then some fruits and then a juice and then a milk or whatever, however reason, than a dessert. I think all those mixed together might be the cause of harming people. So clear out your body of fats for, say, 10 days, and you tell me what happens. Write to me. See if you start to lose weight. I'm starting to see more muscle tone in my body. I'm 43 years old. I don't know how much I'm going to get back. but And I'm feeling very good and strong. And I notice the stiffness in my back from sitting at the desk doing the work I do, trading stocks, has gone away dramatically. So... Um, see if that's what happens and um, see if you start to feel better in the morning. Try some fruits in the morning for a couple uh, weeks and, and just give me the results and let me know what happens. Thank you very much and have a great day.